when we move on to our next panel discussion, and this time around really focused around female entrepreneurship, access and acceptability. We all know access to capital, access to markets, and ensuring that you're collaborating with the right partners are some of the core fundamentals that drive and encourage entrepreneurship development across the continent. But how do we get there? Where are we lacking? What are some of the opportunities that we need to tap into? Well, we'll now be followed by a panel discussion which will unpack many of these elements in ensuring that female entrepreneurship is top of the agenda for the continent. My colleague Fifi Peters will moderate this particular panel discussion, and I'd also like to welcome her speakers who will join her here on stage. Ebehiji Momo, who's a Senior Vice President and General Manager for West Africa for MasterCard, Ngiri Olumide Ojo, the financial services executive, author and founder of the Lighthouse Women's Network, followed by Sono Vuba, managing director of Perpetuate. A warm welcome to these ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Level three applause. Ebehiji Momo is senior vice president and general manager for West Africa at MasterCard. Based in Nigeria, She's responsible for advancing the MasterCard brand presence in West Africa. Nkiru Olamide Ojo is a financial services executive, author, and founder of the Lighthouse Women's Network. She has two decades of experience looking after multinational and national brands in Nigeria and some African markets, and in sectors including financial services, aviation, telecommunications, and oil and gas. Sungoba Vuba is a disruptor in the education space. Currently, she's Managing Director of Perpetuate, an advisory and implementation consultancy for SMMEs. With a deep passion for systemic change in areas of social development, Sungoba has played a number of roles in a number of sectors. All right, fantastic. Let's get talking, ladies. Uh, we did hear at the top that Africa is the only continent where there are more women who are choosing to be entrepreneurs than there are men, right? Yet there is a number of headwinds that these women face in trying to do this, and these headwinds are constraining them from reaching their full potential as businesswomen. So we're here to talk about ladies who... As I look at you, I wonder what kind of challenges you are experiencing at the C-suite, because you sit at the C-suite, you sit at the boardroom table, you're kind of on top of your game. What would you say about the topic of discussion regarding female entrepreneurs being held back? I mean, is that still a case now in 2020? And if so, what are those shackles that are around the ankles of female entrepreneurs? Hmm. Okay, so thanks. Um, Fifi, and thanks, Forbes team, for, for having me. And hello, everyone. Um, so you are right. There are more than a couple of things that are precluding female entrepreneurs from being as successful as they should be. Um, and I think I'm going to dwell on three things. First is a lack of capital. And I know that every time we talk about a lack of capital, people come around and say, yes, but men too lack capital. Yes, it is true that men lack capital. Um, but a recent research showed that um, an average entrepreneur, male entrepreneur on the continent, his business has six times more capital than the female. Hmm. And that is just one of them. I think also the choice of businesses that we agree um, as women to get into, I think that we have a leaning to the more traditional types of, of businesses. I mean, it's so easy, and that's not to say we don't have great African designers. But just based on how we grew up and what we see, we tend to go towards all the regulars and all the basics. So it's also the choice of businesses. And I think lastly would also be the commercial practices. Mm -hmm. um, so what are we doing? We talk about not having collateral and talk about being heavily challenged with this lack of collateral. But what commercial practices are we putting together to ensure that our businesses are able to get the capitals that, you know, that we seek? So 
Um, I think I'll stop with these three and then hand it over to the rest of my, my colleagues. Thank All right, right, fantastic. And, you know, as you guys ladies weigh, as you ladies weigh in as to what is holding us back, perhaps we can um, shoot through how we solve that as well, mm -hmm. just for the interest of time. Okay. We're talking about lack of capital, and what excites me about this panel is that these are all bankers, some ex-bankers, but you understand the kind of models and the risk assessment that you look at in um, turning many female-owned businesses down. So as we talk about challenges, perhaps as a banker and a financier, what can women be doing to get more thumbs up to their business proposals than thumbs down? All right, thank you so much, Fifi. And also, thanks to the first team for having me here. You know, first of all, when we talk about equality, let's start from that. It's not a woman thing anymore. It is a business thing. For example, when, when, we listen, when we're listening to the last speaker, she talks so much about the fact that we, have, we bring in skills, mm -hmm. skills that drive innovation. And even though we have indeed issues when it comes to financing, what we see, MasterCard, for example, we have a, 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 an index called the MasterCard Index for Entrepreneurs. What we, and that is a landscape, what we used to find out the landscape about women. And what we saw beyond the, the issue of capital, like you said, the depths in, the, in credit, is the fact that women lack the confidence. You know, the confidence, the bureaucracies that comes with getting those finances. One of the things that we have done at MasterCard, for example, is training here, right here, in working with uh, junior achievement in, here in South Africa, is working with women to begin to understand how do I put my finances in? How do I, how do I ensure that I have a good record that is presentable? You see a man walking there with so much confidence, he has done his homework. How many of us have done that homework? How many of us have indeed check what is the content of my proposal? What is it that I'm selling? How can you do that? I'm very glad that working with junior achievement, training women between the ages of 18 to 35 years old, we go train them, understand the entrepreneurial skills as well as the business skill, understand how to put a business plan in place. Right. right in Nigeria, where I'm from, the Youth for Technology, one of the things that we did in the last five years, we've trained over 15,000 women. And what are we doing? We're training them through online as well as through the classroom, putting a business plan in place, getting that confidence so that when you come to the bank, you're able to you know, present a proposal that is acceptable. All right, so you're saying confidence, and you're saying yeah. that how we fix this lack yeah. of confidence as women is we do our homework, yeah. we are prepared, Absolutely. and we make sure that we skill ourselves as much as possibly can. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, well, over to you. In terms of what you feel in your experience as a woman is holding back more female entrepreneurs, holding you back from sponsoring and consulting um, more female small businesses, as, as of course, course, this is your role. Sure. So, so I think it's always important to share kind of the full value chain of funding for businesses because I think oftentimes we found entrepreneurs trying to go straight to kind of large banks for funding, which really is more later stage funding mm -hmm. for business. And it's important for us to unpack what that value chain looks like considering kind of the conversation, especially in this country where it's legislated and there are literally over 20 billion rand in funds that are actually being channeled towards ESG and enterprise development, and yet at the same time, we see the opposite trend. It's a growing amount of money that's available, but actually a declining amount of businesses that are being successful and actually managing to scale. And the question becomes, why is that, right? So in the value chain of funding, you kind of have angel investors and grant funding when you're still at inception phase and still trying to test out your idea and actually be able to commercialize it. You then are able to move into kind of more venture capital funds and then kind of more into leverage finance and the banking world and I think that first and foremost it's important for women to educate themselves on the value chain of funding and where they are in maturity of their business and where they should really be going for funding right then the second thing for me is kind of once you've gone to the right place for funding I mean one of the stats that was shared in the MasterCard video was that of all VC investments only three percent are going to female founded businesses. The flip side of that stat is 92% of partners in VC funds are men. Hmm. Mm -hmm. The stats kind of speak for themselves. We all have a sense of bias where we kind of like align with and understand those who look like us and kind of invest in them and align with them and so on. And the reality is that from an investor space, that needs to be transformed to be more gender equitable. Uh, um, right. 
I mean, I was, I was with you guys. I had the, um, the honor of being with you guys at your dinner last night where you were yeah. talking about, you know, designing um, various spheres of uh, the economy for, for change and to better suit women. And I picked up on that note, the fact that, you know, you've got these men that are in these positions. And I do also note the efforts that our governments across the continent are making in um, bringing more women into the, the, the workforce by, by way of, you know, procuring more from their businesses or doing business with more companies that have got female representation on board. If the private sector, mm. you know, is the issue, mm. should we not be bringing in policy to change this? What's the thinking here? Inkiru? I mean, so I agree with you on policies, and yes, I do think that the policies can be both ways. Um, so first, I think we'll start with the government policies. And is government policies that enable women, you know, to, to access funds, an example. I know that Rwanda has changed the assets acquisition policy in the country, and therefore women own a lot more assets, or women have access to owning a lot more assets, which in turn infers that they can borrow more. So I think it needs to come all the way from the level down to the private sector. Mm. I mean, I know that yesterday we did talk about um, social capitalism, but the truth is the private sector is still on about getting value or outcomes from the investments they make. Mm -hmm. So the onus is on you to be sure that you meet the right governance structure so that you are then able to approach the private sector. I mean, not unless you are going to the angel investors or or the grants that, that she spoke recently about. So I think the government can do a lot more to help close the gap, just in terms of the policies that it puts in place and how they support. And just a last piece on the private sector, and, and obviously I speak from experience of sitting on, on panels that are reviewing um, proposals for, for, for some investments, and or some ideas at least. And I think that what the private sector can do is also, because you, you know what you're looking for before you give money or funds into a business, but it's also to take people and to train them and say, Absolutely. when you come before me, this is what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for balance sheets, I'm looking for just basic business records, and lastly, perhaps I'm, I'm looking for just corporate storytelling. How do you tell that story so that I'm convinced and then I'm able to take out some funds to put into your business? Ebi, I yeah. mean, just in your climb, yeah. in your climb, and adding to what Nkuru was saying, in your climb up the ladder, I mean, I, I'm sure you didn't do it alone. We do know that uh, you can't really get to the top alone. But what are some of the, the, the sharings, the, the lessons that you learned on top so that, you know, some of us who are, you know, behind you don't need to necessarily make that, that mistake and can get to where you are at a much quicker pace? I think um, beyond all that have been said earlier today, I think one of the things that I would share in my experience is getting ready for when those opportunities are. Because when those opportunities come, like the last speaker said, how are you, are you ready? Yeah. It's important that beyond all the other things that we have talked about, getting yourself ready. Because the opportunities will come, they're very rare. How, how are you ready? How do you get yourself ready? Some of the things that you do is like education. We talked about education. There are various qualifications within your sphere of whatever it is that you're doing. There are certain qualifications that you need to get. And then be out there. Know what's going on around you. Don't be the woman who is just in your, um, if I may put it, in your cocoon. You don't know what's going on. Those are really important. Earlier speaker, which I really, really love, talked about the attitude. Mm -hmm. That is so critical. And even in, in entrepreneurs, that is something that you, uh, you, you also begin to know and work towards. Mm -hmm. But bringing it back, I just wanted to share something about, I know we talked about government, but it's also important. We have organizations in this room, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of people who are represented here. Beyond what the government is doing, bringing it back to the, the discussion on entrepreneurship, it's also important that we begin to look at how do we support women out there. I'll give you an instance what we did in, in Mastercard. You, you, you know that even getting access to fund, mm. women are required to have collateral. Sure. Isn't that right? Because you require that the banks are going to ask you where is the collateral. This is what we do, did at Mastercard using our data analysis. We were able, working with Unilever through distribution, we were able to understand the behavior of women. How, how do they do their inventory, for example? And using that in law, we're able to partner with banks and they give them access to funding. Mm -hmm. So in your own space, beyond what all the others are doing, how can you help? Whatever it is that you're doing.
Thank All right, you. so perfect. And yeah. I like that, so you're bringing it to the personal. Yeah. Um, and my next question was that, because I want to play a bit of a devil's, devil's advocate and ask how much of the fact that we are talking about a gap, um, a gender gap that what spans between 200 or 250 plus years, how yeah. much of that is because of us mm -hmm. as women holding each other back? So, Ngobo? Sure, so I think it's a very good question for us to continuously ask ourselves. I think it is very important for us to self-reflect, right? Um, and in the work that I do with entre female entrepreneurs, it's kind of one of those where we keep having to hold the mirror up to each other and hold each other accountable and push each other to be bold. Mm. So one of those areas is kind of the choice of business you go into, which was mentioned. It is incredible to me kind of thinking about we've got all these amazing stats for women going into entrepreneurship, but actually in South Africa, if you look at the number of tech startups, and I'll unpack that a bit, that are actually founded and run by women is only 9%. Now, some will argue, actually, I don't want to get into tech. However, we really are in an era, and in the earlier kind of conversation, it was talking about fourth industrial revolution, where every single industry is being optimized, made efficient, and being impacted or disrupted by technology. Therefore, regardless of what industry you're in, you should be finding ways to build it in a tech-efficient kind of way. So the choices of businesses that we as female entrepreneurs get into sometimes is actually at odds with where the funding sits and the funding criteria and funding mandates of what people are actually trying to fund. Mm -hmm. I think also for women it is that we need to be bold and I, we were talking about this yesterday as well around women should be bold enough not only to be aspiring to creating income to kind of be able to sustain their family but we should be bold enough to say I'm building an empire that mm. is going to trade not only in South Africa but on this continent and globally because right. that's really what's going to shift shift the kind of reality of how business or women are showing up in business and in entrepreneurship but also in how we're able to collectively collaborate to really break through the glass ceilings that exist with power with mandate and with collective collaboration between women that are in the space. Right, so we need to be bold enough like the yellow that is dominating on the stage. <laughs> yes, it was planned. <laughs> and uh, just in final, in, in closing comments, because we have around, um, in fact, we've got three minutes left. Um, I'm just stealing those extra three minutes, by the way. So we keep it tight. If you could tell the women that are in this room right now, okay, what's one thing we're going to do? Go walk away such that when we meet again next year for the Forbes um, Africa Leading Women Summit, that we've moved the dial in some way in terms of getting some form of equality of opportunity in empowerment. Ikuru, you started. Can you finish us oh, off? Okay. <laughs> because I was just thinking, but, but I think that is, is just believing that you can. Okay. Um, and then having the courage. I often say that you need courage to start, you need courage to keep going, you need courage to, to get up when you fall, and you need courage to even get going after you have fallen. Mm -hmm. So if you do nothing today, please get courage. Okay. Thanks. So, I mean, and in closing, I'd like to quote um, the executive vice president of MasterCard and also the co-chair for a 30% club. And one of the things she said, she said that half of the world population are women. Hmm. Therefore, it is right that in business, we also reflect that mm -hmm. because the people we serve are 50% women. So that's what I will leave with you. Stunning. <laughs> So final words from you? Sure. So I think to build on that, it's this whole kind of procurement, you know, stats. We say kind of 30% or 40% of procurement should go to women. Technically, 50% of that procurement is ours. So mine is to be bold. Educate yourself on the opportunities that exist and the business cases and what the needs and products and services are that are needed for these opportunities for procurement. And that it is to surround yourself and collaborate and have the best team and the best specialists mm -hmm. helping you show up with a story, show up with the documents that allow you to be funded. Thank you. Ladies, let's see what there. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much.